all have required readings on Java, only six pages of material that I've provided in PDF form. You're not required to do Project 4.5, but if you want to, you'll be doing what I do right now. And if you don't want to do it, you still need to watch this in order to understand better some of the explanations I'll give you about the way a language like Java works. What you're seeing here is a very simple, almost command line driven environment. What it's asking for right now is the name of a program that you want to compile. This is a program named B1 Roll Count. It's actually in the second chapter of the Java Please workbook. I'll be happy to supply that code to anybody who wants to see it, but I don't want to overwhelm anybody just in this demonstration. If I want to compile that program once again, that is this program, B1 Roll Count, I'll just press the Enter key. Now I have to make a choice. Do I want the output to come to the screen or do I want it to go to print? I just want it to come to the screen for this example, so I'll enter a Y. And that's all it really takes. What you just saw happen to compile the program was software called a compiler that takes the program code that I wrote, which is the type of thing you see illustrated in the Java Please readings, and it turns it into something that can be executed by a runtime environment. So what it turned it into is called B1 Roll Count class, but we don't look at that. It's a bunch of gibberish and code that has a meaning to the Java runtime environment. Now to run that, I continue and press the Enter key again. And in this case, what the program is doing is simulating the rolling of one die, that is one of a pair of dice. You know it has six faces on it, each numbered with a number from one through six. So if I roll this 500 times, if the die is random, that is it's not weighted or loaded in some way, I would expect that every face would come up about 83 times, about 500 divided by 6 times. Well here we're tabulating how it really came up with our random number generator simulating the rolling of these dies. We have here on the left a tabulation. Zero came up zero times. Well of course there is no face of the die that has a zero on it but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 came up this number of times and the difference from the expected was this value and we see here one of the values deviated by as much as 10 percent. Well, that's entirely possible. I think it would be nice if we rolled it many more times than that. Now, even rolling a die 500 times for us would be kind of tedious, but the program will do it rather quickly. You saw how fast it simulated the rolling of a die 500 times. I'm going to press the continue key. I'm back out of the environment. However, I want to run another program. Now I'm going to make it a different program. I'm not just going to accept the name I had before. I'll make it B2 Roll Count. This is the name of another program in Chapter 2. This one is almost identical to the first, except it's got a higher number in there for the number of times the program should loop. Instead of 500, it's got 50 million. Now that's a huge number of rolls of a die. I don't think any of us would ever want to attempt that. I don't know how many years it would take to do it. The program will do it rather quickly. So here's the compile. It was quick. But when I run it, I expect it to run a little bit longer because instead of doing 500 loops, it's going to do 50 million. You might think it would take a considerable amount of time to do that. However, just on an ordinary computer, here's what happens. I'm pressing the Enter key. It took a few seconds and it rolled the die 50 million times. Well, it simulated the rolling of a die 50 million times. That means it went through a programming loop 50 million times. And you saw it did that in about three seconds. So you can see the reason that programs and computers are powerful things. They can simulate things very rapidly. If the simulation is accurate, that is, if it's an accurate picture in mathematical and programming terms of real life, then we have simulated something that would be impractical to do in real life. Let's take a look at what we've got. Well, interestingly enough, you see, when we roll something 50 million times, it tends to wash out those little variations that overwhelm the distribution. Here, if you take a look, we have one was rolled this number of times. We expected this number here. Notice all of these numbers, at least the first couple of digits, are meeting our expectations. So we're within tens of thousands. But in fact, in terms of percentages, we're very, very close. The greatest deviation tended to be this one here, which was three hundredths of one percent low. So 3,000 out of 
8 million under expectation. You can see the phenomenon here. A large number in our population means that the variation is going to be very, very small. Well, that's an interesting illustration, but for our purposes, the illustration was really in terms of what the time was that it took for a computer to do this. Since you're probably curious what the program looks like, let's tune into that too. I'm out of the environment, but I have to go find that program. The easiest way for me to find the code and its output, though, would be one more time to run this. And since I don't enter a name here, the same name will be used. But now I won't enter a yes. I'll leave it as a no, which means it will save the output into a file, and it will tell me that it's finished. So it compiled it. Now it runs it. And I'm going to find the program and the output in a file of this name. And I press a key to continue. I'm out of it. Now I have to go looking with my computer. It's in a folder that I've created. Name Java, please. And if I click on this column, it will bring that most recently created program output to the top. And I think I'll open it with a very simple program. I could open it with Word. But Notepad is even simpler. What you're seeing here is comments at the beginning of the program, some definitions of things in the program. Here's the loop that I mentioned. Very simple logic. This is what's actually been run 50 million times because of the value that I set on it, this value here. That's really all I needed to change, by the way, from 500 to 50 million in order to make this thing run much longer. And here's the remainder of the program that's actually doing some work. And here's the output of the program. The reason I created this little environment was to put everything together this way so that a student learning Java can readily see what program language produced what output, as opposed to having to find these in different places. Well, that's about all that you really need to see of this. You will note that these numbers are different. They're different because this was a different run, and we got different results. And they will come up differently every time, because in fact, the number generation process is random, and that process accurately simulates the rolling of a die with six faces. Well, if you're interested in programming in Java, take a look at the remaining pages, the six pages that are not required for you to read in the materials in this course. And if you want to pursue it even further, then of course the Java Please Workbook I would recommend as a good place to start if you're interested in taking CSC 211, which is the next Java programming course. My personal opinion, and you'll probably think I'm trying to sell you a book, but in fact I spent long hours writing that workbook as a public service more or less, the thing that I would recommend is that if you're new to programming and this type of syntax is not familiar to you, this strange punctuation, the strange use of these symbols, the whole idea of how program logic works, if you're not already somewhat familiar with that, with experience in a different programming language like perhaps BASIC or something else, then you really would do yourself a favor to get prepared for the CSC 211 course by trying the workbook and using the environment in it to work through the 30 programs that are in it and understand learning from example how Java works before you ever get to something like a 10-week fairly highly intensive course using a textbook that kind of will inevitably present you examples that are not as complete as the examples I tried to create. One of my frustrations with ordinary textbooks is for publication purposes they tend to give you examples that are fragments. How to do this, how to do that, not necessarily how to do an entire program and to show you everything with annotations. That's what I attempted to overcome by creating this rather inexpensive workbook and providing all the programs so that you can run them, as well as a simple environment that gets you out of the business of trying to set your machine up with some rather complicated things that could get in the way. Anyway, if you're interested in doing the programming problem, Project 4.5, email me and I'll be happy to supply the environment to you that does what you've seen here on the screen. It's not something that I pass out to everybody because, in fact, most people aren't interested in it in CSC 200 and people with a Mac unfortunately can't use it because it was never adapted to the Mac environment. Let me know if you have any questions related to this. I'll be happy to give you a hand.